Hey guys, today I'm back in Kerbal Space Program and I want to try going to Gilly using only the smallest rocket parts. These are pieces that have a tiny radial size and there's going to be an extremely limited selection of parts to choose from. So let's get right into it. So just starting out in the sandbox here, the first thing I wanted to do was find a good fuel tank. Now the first one I came across actually only had liquid fuel and this is the only normal fuel tank of this size. Now I did find this R11 tank but it's only able to be radially mounted so I'm going to have to get a little creative to make this work. So I started out by putting down an octagonal strut and after that, I put down one of these radial tanks on it. Now with that, I actually positioned it as closely as I could to be in the center, and then I used the move tool to get it all the way in there. After that, I put down a second one of these as well, and I tried stacking them like this. Now I decided to grab all of the engines that I could possibly use next, and of all of these, I decided to go with the spark engine. This is the only liquid fuel engine that attaches underneath, and also it has a lot more thrust than the other engines, so I thought it would probably be the best bet here. Now to attach it, I can't put it right underneath these tanks, so I need to put down another one of these strut blocks, and then I could put it on that. The problem though is I got it a little crooked so I had to use the angle tool just to get it perfect. After that I decided to push it up into the tank a little bit and I wanted to put down landing gear. All of these landing gear pieces were really big though and the only one that was good was the very smallest one. Now with that done I put down a seat and this is because there are no crew capsules that are small enough to actually fit in this footprint. So I have to go with the seat here and kind of just hope for the best. Now after that I put down that extra fuel tank and I also compressed the fuel tanks into each other a little bit more. This was to reduce the overall height of the rocket because it was getting really tall at this point and I was worried it was going to tip over once it landed. Now with all that done I wanted to give it a test of the launch pad here. Now the good news was that it actually was powerful enough to get up launch pad. The bad news is I have no stability control so I'd sort of just fall over. Now I put down another strut block and after that I put down a probe core. This is because there's no standalone reaction wheels that are the right size but this probe core actually is and as a bonus it has a little bit of battery power in it so this should be really useful. I also snuck in one extra fuel tank. This was because I was a little concerned concerned about fuel, and I wanted to make sure I had about 2,000 meters per second of Delta V to get home. Now I also deleted that large solar panel, and I used a ring of small solar panels around the probe core, and with that done, I put down a heat shield on the bottom, and that's going to be for re-entry. Now of course, I put right back down my engine. Now to also aid the descent, I put down a parachute here, and it was just small enough to fit on here, and I was hoping it was just going to be enough to get me down safely. Now with that done, I stacked on a few extra decouplers, and this is so I could start working on my main stage to get off carbon. Now I started stacking fuel tanks like I did before, but after I got a few stacked here, I decided to pull it off for now and actually work on my mid stage. This was going to consist of a few xenon tanks and an ion engine as well. Now, right after that, I put down a decoupler and I stacked down my fuel tanks once again. Now, the engines for this stage are going to be the same as before. I'm using the spark engines, and this was because I really didn't have another choice. It was pretty much the only engine that was actually going to fit here. So I decided to double up my fuel tanks and also double up my engines. And with that done, I wanted to give it a test of the launch pad. Now, it looked a little glitchy at first, and when I tried to take off, things this is just didn't seem to go particularly well. So I went back into the editor and I turned on auto strut and I also started strutting tanks together. I figured this should keep everything together well enough. And after I did that, put it back on the launch pad and it seemed to be perfectly fine. So I'm glad that at least solved that problem. And in terms of thrust, it's really not that bad at all. Now the main use of this stage is going to be in the upper atmosphere to get me into a full orbit. But I also noticed when I started to turn here, the rocket was very unstable. Now I should be able to fix this with some fins, but finding small enough ones that'll actually work might be a challenge. Now next up, I wanted to use some solid rocket fuel here, but these regular decouplers were really big and instead I tried these small hard points and these seem to be a lot better sized. Now there's only two rocket boosters that are actually the right size for this and I'm using the bigger of them here. And I just threw on some nose cones at the top and while I was at it, I also put some nose cones on this middle stage as well. I wasn't sure how well they were going to work, but they looked a lot cooler this way. Now speaking of aerodynamics, I also wanted to throw on some fins, so I put some on the bottom here and I also put down a nose cone on the very top. This was only minorly going to clip into the Kerbal, but it should be fine. So with all that in place, I gave it a test of the launch pad here. Now getting off the launch pad was a lot faster now, but I still had my liquid fuel engines almost all the way up here and I was really not happy about that. I'm burning through quite a bit of fuel that I'm going to need later, but after I got up high enough, I wanted to test dropping off these boosters. Now it didn't seem too bad at first. They actually dropped off quite well, but that's when I noticed the top section was very detached from the bottom section. So I used some struts to hold it all together and I think it's those decouplers that were causing everything to be so springy. And next, I wanted to add a little little bit more solid rocket fuel. Now I didn't want a ton so I ended up using these small boosters here and I really like the way they just slipped in between all the other boosters and I thought this would be pretty good. Now it was a lot better than before but I still had my liquid engines burning 
quite a lot, and I really didn't like that. But the other thing I noticed here is that all the solid rocket fuel boosters burned out at the same time. I thought the little ones are gonna burn off a lot sooner here, so I figured there's really no reason to use them over the big ones. But also, my stability, while really bad, was somewhat recovering here. Now, I switched out the little boosters for large ones, like I said, and gave it another test. Now, I realized I'm giving it a lot of tests here, so I just want to go through pretty quickly. But I started to go up here. I was only burning my liquid fuel engines a little bit, and getting these off the rocket also seemed to be fine here. Now, this time, I wanted to test out the top stage, and it had a lot of fuel left in it, but also I noticed that it was somewhat stable. It was a little bit squirrely, but it actually was able to stay in one direction, and as long as I didn't hit too many keys, things seemed to be okay. Now, I decided to just keep burning with this one and see what that would get me, and I managed to get all the way out of the atmosphere. So I warped all the way up there, and I continued up my burn, and I wanted to see if I could get my full orbit here. Now, I didn't quite get there, but I was actually pretty close, and I wanted to test out the very top stage. The first thing I noticed about it was it actually accelerating quite quickly here for an ion engine, but it was also only running at a little over 50% capacity. This was because I was actually starving it of electricity, and my tiny solar panels weren't generating enough. Now, I figured this shouldn't be that big of a problem, because it's still accelerating pretty well here. So with that, I decided to go back to the vehicle assembly building and set on a few more boosters. This would basically ensure I'd get my full orbit here. So with those dropped on, I wanted to start the full mission. Now, to start out, it's pretty much exactly the same as before. I just launched off the solid rocket fuel boosters, but this time I was almost burning none of my liquid fuel. So finally, I had to pop off my solid rocket fuel boosters, and this went pretty smoothly. Nothing seemed to make anything explode, and with that done, I started to turn here and get my full orbit. Now, after I got out of the atmosphere, I stopped burning for a little bit, and I waited until it got a little bit higher. After this, I started to burn again, and this was mainly to prevent going really fast while I'm in the atmosphere, because it extra drags, and it cost me a lot of delta V. So I continued to burn, and I actually just barely managed to avoid getting a full orbit here. But being this close, I figured I could make the ion engine just carry me all the way there. So I just started burning it here, and before I even knew it, I was way over my 70,000 meters, and that gave me a full orbit. So the next step is to wait for a transfer window to EVE, and this took a little while, but eventually I did manage to get it. And with that, I have to start burning away from Kerbin. Now the way that I have to burn away from Kerbin here to get the maximum efficiency means that I'm actually going to be in Kerbin's shadow for a long time, and only when I just start to see the sun is when I should start doing my burn. So with it just appearing over the horizon, I started to turn here, and I fired up the engines. Now again, they're only running at about 50%, but I figured it should be fine, but that's when I noticed the problem. As I started to turn more and more with my orbit, my engine was starting to flicker a lot, and after a little while, it just completely turned off. That's when I noticed the way that I have my solar panels is actually only on the sides of the rocket, so if the sun is directly in front of me, I can't burn at all. So that's gonna be a problem, and I decided to take it back to vehicle assembly building really quickly and just adjust a couple things. Now I decided on one extra Xenon, on tank, and I also replaced the solar panels with these folding solar panels. Now, I don't get any generation while I'm in the atmosphere, but I didn't really need it there anyway, and these are still pretty small, so I'm actually really happy with the size. So, put those on there. I decided to give it another launch here, and I'm gonna skip the vast majority of this, so you basically already seen the whole thing, and I'm cutting now until I got just above the atmosphere. This is high enough that I felt safe deploying the solar panels, and I wanted to give them a shot. Now, they folded out here, which is good, but they also started to turn, and I was really happy about that. That swiveling motion is gonna make them follow the sun, and that's gonna make my ion engine pretty much always work if the sun is ever in view. Now, of course, I nearly finished extending out my orbit again, but I was still a little bit short, and with the extra weight, I was actually more short than before. So, after that, I launched off the ion engine, and you can see with just one solar panel, I'm already at 1.2 kilonewtons. So, I started extending out more, and they weren't fully adjusted yet, but I was already at 1.3, so I just extended all of these out, and with that done, I started to burn. Now, this is actually an interesting burn, because I'm not burning away from Kerbin here, I just want to extend out what's going to be my periapsis a little bit more. The reason for this is I wanted more time where I'm a little bit further away from Kerbin, and that means that my solar panels are going to be able to see the sun for a longer period of time, so that should improve the amount of loops I'm going to have to do around Kerbin before I can fully escape it. Now, after doing my time warp away from Kerbin here, I saw the sun, and I had to start spinning around, and once I finally did that, I fired up my engines, and it was time to start burning away from Kerbin. Now, you can see very quickly here, my orbit started to flip around, and now I was starting to extend out on the other side. Now, I just continued to burn here until I got to a pretty extreme angle, and that's when I finally decided to stop, but I still have a long way to go here. Here, so I decided to loop around Kerbin again and give it another go. So the sun appeared over the horizon, and after that, started to burn my engine once I fully turned, and I continued to extend it out. Now, the way things were going, I was expecting probably one more rotation to be enough to get me fully away from Kerbin. It didn't matter how many times I looped around, just as long as I didn't spend way too much time, because then my transfer window is going to go away, and that makes things a little bit more awkward to deal with. So that loop done, gave it another shot here, and I got this one out all the way past the moon. It was taking a little bit longer than I thought, but again, not really that big of a deal. So 
worked around Kerbin, and this time I was definitely going to be getting away. So started to do up my burn here, and finally here, see I escape. Now with my trajectory around the sun pretty much set here, I decided to make a maneuver node and try to get my encounter with Eve. I spent a long time messing around with this, but I couldn't quite get it to work, so I just pulled in the orbit so I was barely touching Eve's, and I added in another maneuver node right on the descending node. This extra maneuver pulled me right on top of Eve, and I managed to get an encounter. So I just made sure to move over to my encounter, and with that done, I started to turn away and do my burn. This burn took a very long time to get done, and I sped it up quite a bit here, but after a long time, you can see here, I did manage to finish it, and with that done, I just warped over to my second maneuver. Now I just had to turn towards the maneuver node here and start to do my burn. Now thankfully my solar panels are able to easily see the sun, even when it's pointing up and down, and that means I get the full thrust. So I just finished that up here, and I added in one more maneuver node, and this is to get me a really close scrape with Eve. I wanted to be ideally about 200,000 meters away. This would put me far enough above the atmosphere, I don't have to worry about accidentally falling into it, but also it gives me a really tight approach, and that should make getting captured pretty easy. Now after doing a little time warping, I just barely started to see Eve appear in the distance, and after a little while I could see it all the way over there. Now I was looking at the path that I was supposed to take here, and it really wasn't that good. It happened almost perfectly aligned with my ant engines probe, which that just ended up being a really weird coincidence, but also I'm really far off the plane that Gilly orbits, so this is going to be really expensive to try to fix, and a better way to do this I realized would be to backtrack a bit and try to tweak my orbit a little bit more to get closer to Gilly. Now I stood it out here and you can see starting to turn, but after a little while I managed to get this to turn quite a bit more and now it's a lot more flat. Now I just basically redid my burn here and you can see here pulling it in a little bit more, it's a lot better this time. So with that done, just warped all the way to Eve again, and once I got there I was going to need to start burning retrograde to start to get captured. The problem though is that Eve started to block the sun here, so I was going to have to wait until I could just barely see the sun. This was going to cut off a lot of time that I could use to burn, I was a little worried this was going to cause problems. But as soon as the sun appeared here, I started to turn and do my burn. Now I just continued burning here for a little while, and after not too long, I did manage to get captured and had quite a bit of extra time left as well. So I started to pull in my orbit a little bit more, but I ended up stopping so I could do a minor correction to get a lot closer to Gilly. Now I just pulled down my orbit here, and this gets me right on top of Gilly. So with that corrected, I just warped all the way around Eve again, and I pulled in my orbit one more time. This got me right on top of Gilly's orbit, and I figured after a little bit of waiting, I should be able to get an encounter. Now I just did a big time warp here and waited quite a while, but eventually you can see I did get that encounter. The problem though was that this encounter was pretty far from Gilly, so my plan here is to do a very small correction burn and got myself to be right next to Gilly. It took only slightly more than 7 meters a second of delta V, and I managed to just scrape it here. So with that done, I did a correction burn, and you can see now I'm right near Gilly. Now unfortunately my recording got very corrupted during the next like 30 seconds here, so you're gonna have to bear with me. But I started to do my burn here, and I wanted to kill a bunch of my speed. The problem though is I actually can't burn fast enough with the ion engine, so I did as much as I possibly could. But once I started getting too close, I had no choice but to get rid of the ion engine and switch over to the spark engine. Now you can see here, I got that broken apart, and I also extended out the landing gear. Now I did this just in case I forgot to do it later, and since there's no atmosphere here, it shouldn't be too big of a deal. Now I continued to burn here, and you can see I did manage to get my orbital speed down quite a bit, and after a lot more lag, I managed to get down to 16 meters per second, and that was enough to get me a full orbit, and past this point, there should be no more laggy footage. Now, I'm literally orbiting at like 16 meters per second here, so there's really just not a lot of speed to kill at all, and just barely hitting my accelerator is enough to get me on a crash course at this mountain. Now, originally I was planning to land on this, but as I was warping around, I noticed there was this flat plane beneath me, and I figured this would be a really good spot to land. So I decided at this point just to burn a little bit and kill a lot of my extra speed. So after doing that here, I started to fall in, but it was going to take an extremely long time. So I waited a really long time, built up a bit of speed, actually I had to use my thruster to hit myself down a little bit faster, but after a while, I started to fall in this mountain, and I was positioning my legs that I had one leg perfectly pointed downhill. This is to prevent me from tipping over at all, because I noticed it was sort of a slight hill I was landing on here. But with not too much trouble, I actually did manage to land here, and everything seemed to go fine. Now, of course, I had to send my Kerbal out at this point and plant the flag. So I sent them out, and the gravity is really weak here. So I just had to really carefully use the jetpack to get myself on the ground here, and after that, just planted the flag really quick. And once I had that done, I also wanted to try jumping here, just because I thought it'd be fun. Now I'm going about 3.2 meters per second, which isn't enough for escape, but it's surprisingly close actually. I was going up really high, so I had to use the jetpack to get back down, and after that, just use the jetpack to get near the craft again and board the seat. And I was all ready to go here, so I just took off again and started to escape. Now the escape velocity is like 30 meters per second or something really small, so it did not take very long at all for me to finally get out of here, and with that done, warping away from Gilly, and I'm back in Eve's sphere of influence. Now to get back home, I warped to the other side and actually extended out my periapsis a little bit, 
bit. That's to prevent any accidentally Gilly encounters, because I didn't really want to smash into it. But with that done, waited for a transfer window, and I started to play around with the maneuver node. And it didn't take too long for me to eventually get an encounter here. So after that, I had to do two burns to get that to happen. So I just did this first one here, and it was quite an expensive burn. And I was a little worried about running out of fuel, but I thought it probably would be fine. So I just escaped here, and after that, just did a little bit more burning. And with that done, I warped to the second maneuver node. Now this one actually got me really close to Kerbin, so I just warped all the way over there. And there's really not a lot for me to do until I got really close to Kerbin here. Now I wanted to use the last of my fuel here to try to circularize my orbit. And after that, I was just going to use the heat shield and arrow breaking to try to get a landing. So you can see here, burning off the very last of my fuel. And after not too long, I actually did manage to get captured. And I tried to detach the stage, and it was a little glitchy, but it did actually manage to work. And after that, it was just time to get into the atmosphere here. So I started to dip in, and my heat shield was getting a little red. Everything was going good, but I noticed my Kerbal starting to heat up a bit. Now I solved this problem just by moving back and forth a little bit here, but the problem never exactly went away. And as I dipped lower and lower, it only got more and more annoying to avoid overheating. But with enough moving back and forth, I did manage to avoid it, and I got my orbit down quite a bit. Now I did have to warp around a few more times, but eventually I got my orbit all the way down, and it was time to fully enter. Now I was getting a little concerned as well, because my electric charge is getting a little bit low as I was doing this, but fortunately the sun just came up over the horizon, and that completely filled up my batteries and made sure that I had enough to run the reaction wheels. Now after not very long here, you can see the arrow lines went away, and after not too long, got the parachute to deploy, and it was basically just smooth sail into the ground. So guys, thanks for watching. I definitely really like these Kerbal challenges, and if you have any other crazy ideas, make sure to leave them down below. So make sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Make sure to like the video if you like the build, and otherwise, till next time.